Nigeria are looking to top the group against number five ranked Angola. My name is Salale Shani and joining me tonight is Usher Komugisha as African basketball's first female duo commentary team there on your screens of the results of game day three. I don't think we had any surprises so far in this day, but Usher, I think this is a fitting game to close out the day. This is considered the group of death of the tournament. Can Angola force an upset tonight? One can dare say that this is the final before the final, the very biggest game of the group stage. And indeed, Nigeria are unbeaten in Africa since October 2015 right here in Yaoundé. Can Angola deliver the goods? It's going to be a very big one. There is so many matchups to look up to and Angola look like they are ready to rumble. <laughs> ready to rumble, they are. Now, Nigeria have beaten Angola once in the history of their matchups at AfroBasket, and that's saying a lot, but a lot of the team that you see on your screen right now was not there for the previous losses of Angola. Angolan basketball has dipped slightly over the past few years, but they're looking to get back to their championship ways. And as we get ready to call the teams onto the floor, um, both teams beat Mozambique earlier in the week, comfortably, if you will, although the Angola and Mozambican game was quite a physical one. I imagine that this one might be physical as well, Usher. Nigeria did not play against Angola in la the Afro Basket in 2019, and uh, I don't know, maybe it, would it have been a different story if they had faced them in that tournament? Well, Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Angola looks stronger than they have in the last two editions of the women's Afro basket. This is uh, quite because of a few additions in the squad. Whitney Miguel making the difference there and Clarice Mpaka, she wasn't at the 2019 edition, but obviously they're looking good and looking at the squad there with Italy Lucas expected to have a great matchup with Ezine Kalu, the reigning MVP of the women's Afro basket. And also, you know, Nigeria coming from the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. They feel like they are in a good groove playing international basketball. But Angola look like they are ready for the challenge. Another head-to-head -head matchup I'd love to see is uh, Peso, that's number 18 of Angola, against Victoria Macaulay, that's number 25 of Nigeria. Both very athletic players, kind of play the same position. But before we discuss that further and get into the nitty-gritty, let's have a pause in the commentary for the playing of the national anthems.
And that is the referees team on your screens. Sarah El Shanubi from Egypt, Arbia Belgit from Tunisia, and Saber Rez Gui also from Tunisia. And it's just under three minutes here to go until the tip off. Nigeria starting five on your screens. Elonu, Chidom, Kalu, Makaule, and Ibekwe. No surprise there. Those are starting five that have started for most of uh, Nigeria's recent history. Coming off the bench, keep an eye out for is Ogoko, Ogoke. Sarah Ogoke, and they're going to be coached by Coach Otis Hewley Jr., who has been the coach since 2018 at the FIBA World Cup in Spain. And Nigeria have just been growing exponentially ever since. Angola starting five. Lucas Gonchavez, Pequeno, Avelina Peso, and Christina Matikit. Avelina Peso had a beast of a game in the first matchup against a Mozambique extremely talented and physical player coming off the bench you see Manuel and Golom adding depth and height into Angola's front court and of course they are going to be coached by coach Walter Costa a former Angolan men's national team member himself and uh, he represented his country the Athens Olympics in 2004 also featured at the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2002 in Indianapolis. Usher, tell me what excites you the most about this game? Well, obviously, it's the depth in talent and quality from both teams. It looks like a game that will go all the way to the fourth quarter. There's a lot of uh, experience, exposure, and athleticism in this game we will see another repeat of a physical game like we saw between angola and mozambique and we expect that both teams will do the necessary to try and get that w because the winner of this group and of this game will rest for two days before going into the quarterfinals and that is an edge that either team will be targeting you Coach Otis Hewley's passion for the Nigeria team goes beyond it just being a profession. He loves leading this squad. He's been able to develop a, I think they have a, shared vision and it comes across actually quite clearly and the support that Nigeria's national team has been getting and it's great to see Nigeria men and women's basketball programs really just grow so quickly over the last decade well kudos to the Nigeria Basketball Federation who have invested so much time, effort, and money into making sure that both the men and women qualify for the big tournaments in the world, especially in the last four to five years. There's a whole program out there. Sometimes the challenges, but they're trying to do their best, and the results on the women's side is impeccable. Angola will be looking for a podium finish. Nigeria are looking for a three-peat since Senegal dominated in the 70s to the 80s. There is the opening tip-off. Good evening once again and welcome to Yaoundé, Cameroon as Angola draws first blood for Upeso. It's a Group B matchup between Angola and Mozambique and I think we're going to be in for a hotly contested game with this one. Elonu with a beautiful stroke to get this game evened up. It is a captain's basket. As Elono finishes up there, but loses that rebound on the other end of the court. Angola will gladly take that possession. Lucas will inbound. Gets it out to Pequeno. But 
Kano, who's a quick firecracker, knows how to get her way, weave her way to the basket, rather. Well, Kalu trying to help on the defense there. She got caught out. Okay, so to Lucas. Lucas has a Lono on her. Gets the pass to Pekeno. Matikit is fouled in the paint by Chidom. Well, Chidom has to take care because those alley fouls will be very dangerous if Angola smell the idea that they can get had to foul. They'll just stick the ball to her. Chidom is a very reliable player for Nigeria. Eight points, eight rebounds for her. She swings it out to Victoria Macaulay. Macaulay fouled hard by Peso. She's having a conversation with Conchalves. They're arguing about who was supposed to help with the defense. On both occasions, you can see that both teams are trying to get into the game and communication will be very key tonight for especially the bigs. It's a great observation, Usher. Nigeria moved the ball quickly in offense, so if you lose focus for just a moment, they'll make you pay for it as Macaulay gets her first free throw for this game. Looking on our Palace and Musa from the bench. Too hard on that offensive rebound to Chidom. Kalu wide open in the perimeter. Takes a step in, still can't hit it. Lonu tries to keep it alive. Team captain setting the example for her players on how they need to chase down the ball on every single possession, regardless of whether it's the beginning or the end of the game. Gonchalves loses the ball. Very good hands from Macaulay. And that's going to be Peso's second personal foul. A player who was so pivotal, pivotal for Angola in the Mozambique matchup. And you can tell the energy is different than how they played against Mozambique, which just is, says so much about local derbies. She's all over the place at the moment. She needs to get her act together. Kaule gets herself into a favorable position. Kiss off the glass to give Nigeria their three-point lead. Pequeno to Peso. Peso is going to try and get to the basket. And Ibekwe will pick up her first foul. Her hands came all the way up a bit too late. She caught Peso's elbow. You know, when you're in the heat of the moment, Usher, you actually don't know you fouled. According to you, you've played great, fantastic defense. It's always interesting how the players want to negotiate with the referees and say that that wasn't a foul, but the rules are clear. Peso short on the second free throw as well. And here comes Kalu and Team Nigeria. And Lonu muscles her way into the hoop just off target. Chido tries to put it back. And that was good offensive play from Chidom. Talking about her performance in the game against uh, Mozan Mozambique. Eight points in that matchup. And uh, Nigeria squad coming off of three losses at the Olympics. Three games, three losses. And you have to wonder what that does to their motivation as they come into Africa's premier basketball tournament. Do you think that will negatively or positively impact their performance? Positively, because now they're hungry. And as we see Peso heading to the bench, she has three fouls. Danger for Angola as Whitney Miguel steps onto the court. Nigeria will make them pay. Chidom! Wide open on the drive. Four points for her. And we'll have a timeout on the floor. You can see great defensive play by Ilonu. Gets it to Makale. Out to a sprinting Chidom down the lane. That's the transition offense that Nigeria rely on. 
filling those lanes so well. Timeout has been called by Angola. Let's listen in to what they have to say. Calma, não se estresse. Há muito que jogar. Não fica nervosa. Malta, o problema, estamos aqui atrás. A malta está a defender aqui em cima e elas estão a cortar por trás de nós. Quando nós temos que estar atentos, o nosso defensor é a bola. A malta tem que recuar para defender. Temos que ter contacto com o nosso jogador. A malta está a deixar com que elas circulam aqui normalmente, ok? No ataque, vamos circular a bola e vamos jogar mais aberto à vontade. Jogas aqui em cima, não joga aqui em cima da linha. Porque eles estão a te defender, depois tem o um defensor aqui do posto. Vamos fazer dois. Está bem, Regina? Fica à vontade, haja calma. Está bem? Vamos lá, Malta. Jogar aberto, circular mais a bola, defender mais, sem medo de nada. Vamos lá, bora. Well, Angola very surprised there with how Nigeria have started this game. Two minutes played already, and they will be looking to stable that ship. The coach, Walter Costa, emphasizing on them playing wide. Swing that ball, and you can see now Nigeria have opted to play a full court press and will be targeting to get a double trap somewhere. And Ifi Ibekwe with the round down, fouled by Regina Pequeno. You know, Nigeria, they have the speed and the length to make it a very, very dangerous full court press. And you can see Ibekwe timed that pass just right, draws the foul. And Nigeria have a chance to make this 11 points. Well, this is a very well-oiled team. They've been together for so many months, preparing fast for the Olympic qualifiers in Belgrade, Serbia, before preparing for the Olympics. And here they are. So they've been together for most part of this year. You can see the sisterhood in everything that they do, the way they cheerlead each other, the way they anticipate the presence of their teammates. And it's showing already in this game. Speaking of sisterhood, Angola are going to have to come together. The only person that has scored on that squad is Peso, who's now on the bench as Mati Keat tries to connect. It's no good. Ilonu now get it to Ibekwe. Ibekwe too hard off the glass. Makaule grabs the offensive rebound. They're going to call a walk on her. She was trying to get a handle on the ball as she was getting past the defenders. There's very long hands in that paint. Macaulay, Ibekwe, and Adaora. They have a strong presence there. And obviously, Chidom complimenting them. Gonchavez now. Gets it out to Lucas. Lucas tries to save it, and it's those turnovers that are killing Angola right now. Only scored three points in the last three minutes it's third turnover for them nigeria doing a good job of valuing the ball kalu way off the mark and speaking of turnovers nigeria pick up their first one gonchalves will inbound the kenya brings up the ball she's going to decide dish it out to Gonchavez and that was a good offensive move from Pequeño to draw the defense and dish it out for the finish. Chidom to Carlo and I think Angola needs to step up the, the defensive pressure. They've allowed Nigeria to really get too comfortable and it's, it's those silly regions that have now put Nigeria in the bonus. Well, obviously, Angola need to figure out that defensive approach because the Zono man, for example, that has Christina fouling Ezine Kalu, that's a mismatch that you don't need at this point in the game, especially with Peso off and on the bench. You need the big players to control the rhythm of the game. And so far, Nigeria are running away with this one. Ezine Kalu, the reigning MVP, there's a reason why she has that award. Kalu gets up on the scoring board with those two points. And you can see Nigeria are giving Angola no space to get comfortable with the full court press. Makaule 
times those passes so well. Italy, Lucas. Throws it out of bounds. And we, we've talked about it, Usher. The, it could be a personal opinion of mine, but the best way to break that press is to get that ball in the center of the court. Look at all that space. So Gonchalves, instead of staying in the far side, should have come closer to the center, which is actually where Italy passed the ball. I mean, basketball is not rocket science. It's very simple. You just need to do the basics. And Angola needs to just do exactly that as Ifi Bekwe, as Macaulay drops an easy two there. Ten point lead for the Tigers. Matikit loses the ball, poked away by Ezin Kalu. And she, she comes on the left wing. She'll have a perimeter shot, short. Matikit who gets the rebound and kicks it out to Rosemira. Rosemira sees the center lane open. Loses the ball once again. Azin Kalu, her second steal to Elenu. Elenu tries to absorb the contract, can't get the ball, the contact rather, can't get the ball up. But uh, she will go to the line. And it's a quick 10 point lead for Nigeria, who are playing basic basketball, but are getting it done. Angola just making things difficult for themselves. Too many turnovers. There's just one of them in the paint attempting to score. And there's four Nigerians who are picking up the rebound, running the lane on the fast break. And it's an easy layup on the other side. And that explains the 10 point lead as Adora Elonu, the captain, attempts to shoot on the free throw line. Elonu gets that. Second free throw to go. And there you go. That's a Nandir Manuel. She was in the right position this time, right around center court. And she can she has her hand up. She knows that she could have done better. And I don't know, is it is it nerves for Angola? They Angola is just taking too long to get into the game. By the time they figure that out, it will be a 20-point lead. They have to take care. These are the defending champions. Chidam tries to put it up. They're fighting for the rebound. Ball will roll out of bounds. And stay with Nigeria. So take a look at the scramble there. Signs of a good game. Ibekwe. No good. Makale. Can't get that one to drop either. Ibekwe with the offensive read on Chidom back into Mikawe. And look at them moving that ball so well, so efficiently. We spoke earlier about Ibekwe, Makawe, and Chidom. Very good hands. Lucas trying to take things into her own hands. Rosmira kicks it out for the easy lane by Whitney Miguel. And Nigeria do a good job of bringing the ball up, but now Italy Lucas manages to steal it. Rosemira in the 2 1 situation here. Basket good for Rosa Gala. And Angola, who excel in points from turnovers, are cut down this lead to nine points. Chidom. Great cut, great find from Ezine Kalu. She delivered in style for the Tigers, who now have an 11 point lead here. Lucas, deep! Italy Lucas, firing from the three point. And now it is 12 points for Angola, Nigeria 20. And she announces her arrival in this game. Look at that replay. Good dish, Rosa Gala off the glass. Good find from Azine Kalu. She had five assists in their game against Mozambique, as well as 17 points. And we've not seen her really get going on the offensive end, but she's making sure everyone is involved. As a, that was. Number 10, Promise Amukamara. 
who attempted that shot. Nigeria not turning down the heat, but Italy Lucas has no problem bringing the ball up on her own. She sends Amukamara to the ground and fires. Ibekwe keeps it alive. And Angola are going to increase that defensive pressure, and that's what they need to do against a team like Nigeria. If you don't keep your foot on the gas, they will outperform you. Kalu, it looks good. It's good. Three points for Azim Kalu. Five points for her in this game. That's a nice shot from the best line, showing her quality in this game. As Rosanira Daniel is called out for that offensive foul. And two substitutions, Sarah Ogoke and Palace waiting on the touchline. Nigeria in the bonus and they'll need to take the ball in as Izin Kalu has a seat. Sero Goke is into the game. Bring in some fresh legs. I think Nigeria probably has the deepest bench in this tournament. All 12 of their players with vast international experience. Amukamara kicks it out to Elonu, gets it to Palace. Palace with the ball for a bit too long in her hands. Tries to give the handoff. No, Ibekwe now with five on the shot clock. Tries to hit the bank shot. Here comes Italy Lucas on transition. Nice pass to Nadir Manuel. Manuel sends Palace to the ground. And the good finish. That's the Manuel we're used to seeing, Usher. She's back with the bounce to the women's Afro basket, and she's looking good for Angola. Ogoki high off the glass, no good. And now Rosa Gala gets it to Italy Lucas. Nadir Manuel, excuse me, that was Whitney Miguel in the wing. And that one was short. Nine point game. Under two minutes left here in a first quarter that has just flown by. And that's because we've had some great African basketball action on the floor. Palace! They'll call the foul on Miguel. That's going to be her second foul. And these are key players who are picking up fouls. And it's going to come back to haunt them later on in this game, Usher. Well, you have to look at uh, the Nigerian forwards. They're big, quick on their feet and attack the basket. When you look at uh, Palace, you look at Shidom, Macaulay, Ibekwe, they are players who like to take the ball to the hoop and that will force the Angolans to foul. And you can see their foul situation. Eight team fouls already in the first quarter. That's too much for Angola's liking but they'll try to compensate on the other side of the court there's a 10 point game now nigeria 24 angola 14. Palace gets the second one to go to push this to an 11 point lead Italy lucas almost gets bottled up whitney miguel tries to get the ball and they're going to call the foul on promise Am amu kamara Ibekwe will go to the bench. Checking into the game is number 33, Nicole Ednabosi. Angola's Linda Golom also checks in. Gala snatched from the air by Nabosi, but they're going to call a foul on her. And Gala, it's almost like she wasn't watching what was happening on the floor while she's on the bench. But uh, she is rewarded for her effort. And she'll head to the line to shoot two. Both teams now in the bonus. 
That's a much needed one point for Angola. Rosa Gala, one of the success stories of Angola's youth structure, played at the under 16s and the under 18s. Over the years, Angola have shown that there are no shortcuts to success. You have to invest in the youth. And Rosa Gala is that success story, having played for Angola and also at club level at the Africa Club Championships. For Primero de Agosto. Gala off the mark. Big rebound from Nadia. Manuel, she can't get it to go either. Manuel will put that pressure on the backcourt and then fall back to give Palace a tough time. It's good fronting there. Ogoke at the wing. It was a good look. Huge rebound by Enabosi and she'll put it back in. Italy Lucas will have to do a better job to box out and get that rebound. And Rosa Gala, who did so well in the previous possession, now just couldn't get her fingers on the ball. We've seen that happen twice in this game. Her and another guard. Kick to Okonkwo. Okonkwo finds Enabosi in the wing. Pass into the post, back out for the three-point shot. Sarah Ogoke can't get that one to drop. And it's a foul on Golom. Smart move there from Promise Amkamara to attempt to put the ball up. And that earns her a trip to the charity line. As she looks to extend Nigeria's lead in this game. Amukamara misses the first shot. Makes the adjustment. Gets the second one to go. Gala manages to keep the ball alive. She's going up against Palace. It's not a great decision by her. And Ogoke smacked away by Nigeria Manuel. Now Manuel with the steal, gets it out to Rose Mira. Rose Mira getting bottled up by that Ogoke Amukamara defense. There's uh, clearly a lack of communication from the Angolans. They need to play together as a team. And so many of them are lagging behind when it comes to their offense. And that's an offensive foul from Italy Lucas. She was trying to shake off Sarah Goke, but uh, hit her a bit too hard. But, well, those are the instructions to Sarah Goke to go and stop Italy Lucas. And so far, she's doing a great job. She's literally in her face. And she's uh, one of the fittest players at this tournament. And Ogoke has one job and one job to do. And that's it right there. To lock down Italy Lucas. Italy Lucas manages to draw the foul on that three-point shot. Usher, you look frustrated. Talk to me. I mean, Angola, they look like they are out of their depth. Yet going into this game, on paper, they look like a team that can challenge the Nigerians, but so far we've not seen so much of that. Perhaps they're growing into the game. There's so much to play for, obviously. It's a 12-point game, Italy Lucas on the line. That's the second one in. She converts those ones easily. And Lucas has a chance to make this a 10-point game. Too. Finish up the first quarter. 
And that was something that was desperately needed by Nigeria. And Amosi fires. Ayaz handles it in and look at the bench go wild. <laughs> that was beautiful from Anna Bossi to celebrate that one going into the break as oh, the, the Tigress enjoy that throw I should call it beautiful beautiful they needed that going into the break and she delivered the Reem had a good conversation there the Reem was definitely working in her favor and that's <laughs> black girl joy on your screens as they celebrate Enabosi at the buzzer. It's the end of the first quarter. Nigeria 31, Angola 18 points. And Usher has, couldn't put it better myself, we expect to see a better performance from Angola. But looking at the statistics here, they're shooting well from inside the arc, 50% in two points, 25% uh, from three, not taking as many attempts as they should. And is it a situation of Angola not just being more aggressive offensively? Well, they're not moving that ball clearly as they should normally. There's a lot of pressure on the ball from the Nigerians, but the Angolans need to use those screens and move that ball and see what they can get from the field or from behind the axe. Otherwise, the Nigerians are also benefiting so much from the fast break points. It is something that they can correct. And as we see the scoreline, 31-18, it is going to be a high-scoring game. And you love to see that. Yes, indeed you do. I think good things happen whenever you attack the defense. Uh, you can't say that Angola's three-point shots are falling right now, but they're not attempting them either. They've had four attempts in this first quarter. But when you see what Nadir Manuel is doing right there, attacking the defender, attacking the paint, is what good things will happen for Angola. As Enabosi saw a great way to finish off the first quarter and a way of basically declaring that, yes, Nigeria did own this first quarter. That's the highest scoring quarter we've seen in this tournament so far at 31 points. And Angola are going to have to come out of this stoppage with a lot of energy, the kind of energy we saw against Mozambique. Where yeah. did that go? Well, this is a whole different ball game. You're playing against the defending champions, back-to-back -back winners of this tournament who are fresh from the Olympics, fresh from playing superstar teams like France. Like, and France is a team that got to the Eurobasket final. You have the world champions, USA, and that alone is enough to get Nigeria thinking at a world level. So Angola have their work cut out. They need to wake up and face the giant that is Nigeria. Top of the second, Ibekwe back into the game as well as Makaule. Makaule kicks it out to Kalu. Kalu is fouled by Rosemira and Angola bailing out Nigeria way too much. There's absolutely no reason to foul. The idea is just to make the shot challenging, not to block it, especially when it comes to three-point. You have to analyze your risk factors. Uh, Rosamara needs to think about every possession because it will count. And you don't want to give the Nigerians a lot of confidence this early. Kalu, who's a great free throw shooter. Previous game, she was 75% from the free throw. Correction, 87% from the free throw. She is a great shooter as Nadir Manuel ball bounces off her leg and goes out of bounds. It's another turnover for Angola. That is it's going to be their 11th turnover so far in this game. Kalu at the half gets it to Ibekwe. Ibekwe 
getting trapped with the baseline. Big rebound from Golom. Golome now, top of the key, gets it out to Parker. Parker finds Nadine Manuel. She thought it bounced off the Chidom. And that was a good spin from Manuel. Second time, it bounces off her leg. There's a lot of pressure from Chidom in that pain. And she's not standing alone. Macaulay, shot as Nadir picks that rebound and Rosa Gala runs the floor. Options, Clarice and Paka on the floor. Gala gets it out to Manuel. Manuel now with a one-on-one -on -one situation. She's gonna go for the finish, no. Kicks it out for the shot. All the way off. Manuel should have just finished it as Rosemira falls down hard. It looks like she could have twisted her neck, but she gets up. She gets back up and is good to go. Ibekwe. Let's look at that free throw, at that replay there. But she gets up, good thing for Rosamira Danielle. She don't, looking for options on the best line. Out to Elonu, Elonu finds Macaulay in the mid post. She's gonna have to get it up, she's fouled. And it's just too many fouls for Angola, 11 team fouls for them. The Nigerians are very swift on their feet. They know how to get Angola into that situation. Because if you look at it, what exactly was Ibekwe going to do right there with the ball? And there will be a change. Nadir Manuel comes off for Christina as Walter Costa is left to think very hard on how to find solutions here. Macaulay converts the very fast one of the two. Misses the second. Rebound there from Golome. Rosa Gala runs the floor. Clarice Mpaka gets the option. Passes it to Christina. Christina back to Clarice. And Rosemira with the attempt misses. Macaulay with the rebound and Ibekwe running the floor. Fails to make it. Gets her own rebound. Up again and out. Off of Golome. Ibekwe and is fighting those, uh, hard. Fighting hard in that paint. She's fighting hard. Deservedly so though. She's one of the leaders in the paint for Nigeria. Gala now at the wing. Gonna have a kick. Ball stays with Angola. And someone on the Angolan squad is gonna have to just take charge and decide that they're gonna change the trajectory of this game. They know, they know what they're capable of. You just need to see it. Mati Keat now with a spin move. She steps on the baseline. Another turnover for Angola. <laughs> who are now at 12 turnovers. Macaulay to Chidom. Get out to Eloni. Eloni floats in to Chidom. Chidom manages to keep her hands on it. Back out to Eloni. Kick out to a back way for the three-point shot. And Nigeria thought it was their possession. Ibekwe looking for something to go her way in this game. And getting a bit frustrated. But that's the thing about professional players. She'll stay put. As Zenit Kalu 
calls her teammates. Otis Hewley Jr. looking around and... Not just looking, that's a death stare. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that that stare could change the official's call? Absolutely not. I think you, you do it mostly for yourself. Just to convince yourself that things will get better. It's a self-soother. Quite necessary sometimes during the game. <laughs> Gala brings the ball up. Patti Keith now at the top. She'll take a long two. Can't get that one to fall. Ibeke with the rebound. Gets it to Kalu. Kalu to Kidom. Kidom counts. Makale. The low post. Kicks it out to Ibeke. And that's good ball movement from Nigeria. And still plenty of time on the clock. Kalu fires. Kalu chases it down, but can't save the ball. But that was a great possession from Nigeria. Moved the ball. I don't think almost everyone on that team got some touches. And that's how you want your team to play. And there's blood on Nakalda's face. She'll head to the bench. In comes Enabosi. Rosemira to bring the ball up. Kicks it out to Matikit. Matikit up against three defenders. It's knocked. Not knocked. Out of Nigeria's hands. Is going to give a technical to the Angola basketball coach. Are they warning? Emotions are, are high. Chidom keeps the possession. Ibekwe, strong center drive. And that's a good, strong move from her to draw the defense. She wants to finish it, though, and get that three-point opportunity. You can look at the replay. That's good footwork to draw the foul and get to the line. She's been looking for something to go her way in this game and finally she's on the charity line. Misses the first one. Believe it or not, Asher, e Ibekwe has now three points in this game, but the way she's been so active, you'd think she'd be in the double digits. She's been trying so hard. Even though she's not scored much in this game, she's been playing great defense on the other side of the court. And also the leadership and her presence in that paint is something you won't find on the score sheet, but very, very helpful for the Tigers. Ibeko, speaking of things that are not working out. Chidom out to Elonu, kicks it out to Azim Kalu, who was in the corner. Two seconds on the shot clock. She has to throw up a wild one. Golome with the rebound, and here comes Gala, coach Walter Kosa, who has not made a substitution in the last several minutes. Decided to keep the bench players on the floor. Matikit. Way off. She gets the ball back and a chance again. One can't fall either. She don't picks up her, her second foul. And we have some substitutions from Nigeria. Nigeria are rotating the five players on the floor a lot more than Angola is. And Coach Otis Hewley is going small in this second quarter. You have Ezin Kalu, Promise, Sarah Ogoke, all guards, Adawara, and Ibekwe. So no power forward, no center. And that can only mean one thing. They want to run that ball. They want to play a full court press and run the floor, open up a big gap against Angola. But let's see if that works out for the West Africans. 16-point lead for Nigeria. 
Jean Carlo creates that space. Nice shot from Carlo. We'll talk about her having a quiet night, but that's her 10th point. She's making those buckets when it matters. And they'll, they'll call a foul on uh, Kalu. She'll pick up her second. And obviously, Kalu and Clarice Pak know each other from playing in France, bringing that rivalry down to Yaoundé. As Rosagala inbounds the ball to Clarice. Paka to Rosemira, Rosemira back to Paka. Paka for the three-point shot, can't get it to drop. Big rebound from Matt Keat and the putback. And it is back to a 16-point game. As Nigeria continue to maintain a commanding lead. Five minutes, 20 seconds played in this second quarter. We take a look at that replay. Call the foul on Rosa Gala, number two of Angola. And Angola are on track to get Nigeria back into the bonus. Ogoke to Makale. Back to Ogoke. Finds a cut in Ibekwe. No. Rosemira now will bring the ball up. Get to Nadir back in the hands of Rosemira. And poor shot selection for Rosmira. Makaule keeps it alive. Gets it to Ogoke. Amu Kamara out to Ogoke. Ogoke in and out. Ibekwe grabs the rebound. And is fouled. So she earns a trip to the charity stripe to shoot once again going to be her third time to get to the free throw line and she is 75% for the line if the saying if you don't succeed at first try 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 again was a person that would be Ibekwe I see that you are a musician you are a woman of many talents Ibekwe hits the first free throw. Two clutch free throws for Ibekwe. We have a substitution. She'll go to the bench, well deserved, and Okonkwo will check into the game. Morale is high in the Nigeria bench as Italy Lucas also checks into the game for Rosa Gala. Lucas has had a quiet first quarter. It's six points for her. She'll be looking to get her teammates involved. Paka puts the ball into Lucas's hands. Hand off to Rosemira. Rosemira fakes the pass. Oh, too short. Matikid with the offensive rebound. She can't get that one. Manuel. Fighting to keep it alive for Angola, but here comes Elono on the other end. Look at the rejection from Paka. She timed it just right. That's the resilience from Paka and the Angolans at this point. Things may not be going on well for them on offense, but they are present on the other end of the court. Powerful there from the veteran 37-year-old Clarice Paka. Manuel timed that rebound wrong. And Okonkwo short. Manuel times it right the second time. And here comes Lucas. She's killed her dribble, gets it out to Paka for the three point. No. Ogoke to bring the ball up with just over three minutes left to go here in the second quarter. Amu Kamara, second chance, opportunity, and she takes it and makes it. <laughs> Promise Amu Kamara with a third point of this game. Paka now gets the ball into Nadir Manuel. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. She decides not to take it. Lucas with the shot fake. 
plant finish. Manuel rejected by McCauley. But they're going to call the foul. And it's been Block City in this game for both teams. Nadir Manuel will head to the line. Can hear chanting in the crowd. It is for Angola. Nineteen point lead for Nigeria. Okwonko it out to Ogoke in the corner. Ogoke kick out to Amakamara. Amakamara throws the pass into Victoria Macaulay. She just couldn't get a hand on it. She thought she was pushed from behind. And she was happy that Amakamara at least made the attempt. Here comes Paka with the ball. Nice find to Nadir Manuel, who has struggled with keeping her hands on the ball. She gets the rebound back. She's going to go up stronger. No. Macaulay very frustrated there with the calls. But she has been a strong presence for the Tigress in this game. Manuel just can't win a bucket. Macaulay making it very difficult for her to score. And Manuel will go back to the free throw line. Shoo she missed one of her free throws in her last attempt. This time she hits the first one. Gets the second as well, and Angola really trying everything to try and cut down this lead. But it's been a tough ask against the number one ranked team in Africa, Nigeria. Ogoke to Okonkwe. Look at Okonkwe, look at that ball movement. And Amu Kamara is rewarded for good basketball. You love to see it, Usher. And it is a 20 point game now. The reigning champions are pulling away from Angola. Another steal for Nigeria. In Abosi to Konko, Konko to Ogoke. Ogoke is feeling it too strong. Manuel to Conjalves. And they're going to call an offensive foul off the ball. There's the replay as a Karaiwe looked for support and fell to the ground. Beautiful finish there. And Christina has three fouls. She heads to the bench. And Golome replaces her. Amu Kamara to bring the ball up. Gets it to Okonko, back to Amu Kamara. And there, looking at that triangle offense. Ogoke now. Gets it to Okonko, Okonko drills it! Is and there anyone on the Nigerian team who cannot shoot from behind the arc? We talked about it. There really isn't. There really isn't. And almost every player has scored at least three points in this game. And that's a dangerous team to play against. Italy Lucas couldn't find the basket in that shot. And Enabosi now gets to Amu Kamara. As Nigeria makes a 25 point lead against Angola. And this is quickly becoming a blowout, Usher. Granted, it's still early days, but no, Nigeria have the momentum. Sarah Goke, easy lay in. Nadir Manuel doesn't want to challenge that shot. With 15 seconds left on the game clock. 
Nigeria not turning down the heat in any way, shape, or form. Italy Lucas now with the ball. She shoots the three-point shot and knocks it down. The fans love it. But it's still almost a 20-point lead. 20-plus point lead for Nigeria. And that will take us to the bottom of the second quarter and the end of this first half. Nigeria complete domination in this second quarter. They're getting it done on every front. Well, the reflection there, 24 point lead for the defending champions and Nigeria have been effective on both ends of the court. They've really had a great day scoring, running that lane, shooting from behind the arc and Otis Huli Jr. will be proud of the figures there. Let's look at the free throw line. 18 of 23 for Nigeria. 2 out of 10 for Angola behind the act. Not so good. And looking at the rebounds, Nigeria 28 and 9 assists for Nigeria. 7 steals. And that has amounted to great space in there. And very good for the Detigris. Halftime scores, Nigeria 52, Angola 28. We'll be back with more great basketball action in just a moment. the ball. Peso offering her a screen. It's a kick out to Peso. Peso was not expecting that pass. Costa on the other end. She's going to try and go all the way. Peso recovers and deflects that shot. That was good defensive recovery from Peso. Now her third point for the game. Kenya have to recover on the other end. <laughs> oh, a wild shot from a number six, Fernandez. One final shot off. That'll be at the hands of Shili. <laughs> Basket is good. You can hear the Guinean fans shouting defense. That's a big block by Kaba. Soraya, nice speed to find Abdel Nabi. And Egypt are looking very, very comfortable with their offensive motion right now. We have walked this land for a long time. We know how far we've gone.
and we're sure of how far we can go. Unity is not just a word here. It's not just a spirit in this sport. It's the way we all move. We are proud of our art, country, family, language and culture. We are united by basketball. Welcome to FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2022.
Welcome back to the Palais de Sport here in Yaoundé, Cameroon. Looking at some of the game leaders for Angola. Lucas at nine points. Manuel, six rebounds. Lucas, two assists. Now, Italy Lucas with those nine points has been silently great, but the offensive struggles really have been quite large for Angola. She's had two assists, one steal, an efficiency of just six, and I'm used to seeing a greater output for her. We're now looking at the game leaders for Nigeria. Kalu, 10 points. Ibekwe, 7 rebounds. Kalu, 2 assists. Talk about being silently great. You would not have been able to tell. She's been putting up those points when you least expect it. But she is a top performer for Nigeria. She had 17 points and 5 assists in her first game, shooting at a field goal percentage of 71%. In this game, she has those 10 points and is shooting 33% from the two points and 25% from the three. But let me tell you something, Asha. The story of Nigeria's success is in their points distribution. Every player has scored at least one basket except for Inkem Akaraiwe. And she's only played two minutes and 14 seconds. Yes, obviously looking at that point distribution that you're talking about it's very important to look into their depth and nigeria is you know a very populous country 210 million that obviously means that they have the privilege of changing the squad rotating wherever they have they have talent across europe talent across the u.s and in nigeria one of the best sporting nations on the continent, the giant of Africa, they are known for, and they're looking for a three-pit here. And this game today against Angola, the victory could mean so much in that journey to look for a third straight title on the African continent. Looking at Otis Hewley Jr. and the chemistry that he has with his players is quite remarkable. He treats his players very well and they share an objective and understand so much that they've gone through in the past months that they can easily adjust to any situation in this game. And so far, they're leading comfortably, but he deserves and is asking them to deliver and take one position at a time to stay in this game. Looking at Angola, what do you think they need to do to win this game? Well, Angola has had 18 turnovers in the half. That is way too many. And they've all gone, also gotten themselves into foul trouble several times. 16 total fouls for them. I think those are two areas that they need to adjust on majorly. But it comes down to a team effort. It's no time for hero ball. They cannot expect um, Italy Lucas to carry this team. Next in scoring is Christina Matikit with six points. And then you have uh, Nadir Manuel, five points and six rebounds. It's not good enough, especially against a team like uh, Nigeria, who have just five turnovers, Usher. And that, to me, is a sign of a team that is really operating well together as a unit. Angola don't have the excuse of not knowing each other. They are very familiar with each other as players. So make no mistake. That scoreline, you see, we've seen teams bounce back from a 25-point deficit in the half. This game is far from over, but it's Angola to make that choice as a squad how they want the outcome of this game to be. As Peso, who got into early foul trouble with three, gets back to the game. Italy Lucas bounces around, pops back out. Azim Kali will get the ball to Ibekwe. Ibekwe! Early three-pointer, can't get that one to drop. And Pequeno will get the ball out to Gonchalves for the three-point shot. No basket there either. No such luck for Angola. Eloni now from the baseline. And she gets things going here in the third quarter. Nigeria, the first basket of the half. Gonchalves. It's it into Matikit. Matikit has Chidom to contend with. Contend with Chidom plays great defense. No foul there. 
Gets the ball out to Kalu. Kalu now wide open at the free throw line, but misses everything. That was a fast-paced one minute of the first third quarter. And now Angola will bring the ball up. Number 17, Regina Pequeno. We've also not seen a lot of minutes of, from her in the first half, and that's because Angola, again, so many of the key players got into foul trouble early. Italy, Lucas, hasn't been able to connect. And Ibekwe, because she's been hit in the face. I'm taking a look at the replay there. Lucas had a good look at the hoop. There's a rebound, and it looks like Pequeno accidentally scratched her in the face. She's going to bounce back. She's back on the floor. By the time Ibekwe goes to the hotel tonight, she'll have earned that performance and rest. But as long as Nigeria get the W, that is the list of her worries. In any case, tomorrow is a rest day for all the teams. I think a lot of the teams in this tournament will appreciate that. Makaule, quick first step, kicks it out for the three-point shot. Ibekwe out to Azim Kalu. One pass, too many, and Gonchavez gets a piece of it. Manages to deflect out of bounds. It looks like Elonu had the final touch there. And Pequeno will bring the ball up. Lucas now on the wing with Kalu. Usher had touched on this matchup at the beginning of the game. He still not thinks seen things get hairy between the two of them. Gonchalves, nice floating pass into Marikit. Marikit makes it count. It's gonna be... Now, Chidom, all the way to the basket. Soft touch, but a bit too soft. Peso. Had a quiet start to this third quarter. And yet we know what her offensive output can be. Foul on Peso. She grabbed Makaole. That's going to be her fourth foul, Usher. Walter Costa is faced with a dilemma whether to leave her on or take her off. And he decides to leave her on. What would She'll you do, play? Usher? I mean, I'll leave her on because you can never know the potential of how it could go unless you play her. And they've already missed her. We are together. <laughs> Interesting there. Good choice by Walter Cosa and Usher. Peso <laughs> with the opportunity to make this a three-point play. I keep telling you that I have a niche for coaching. Ah. It's coming, you know. Tell, talk to the director. Make sure he puts your name and graphic coach <laughs> Usher Komugisha. <laughs> I'm sure he's had what you just said. Pesa on the line for Angola. Pesa unable to convert. Matikit. You get the rebound. And Elonu. Gets both hands on it. Chidom struggles to get the ball. Gonchavez with the steal. And now Lucas will bring the ball up. Lucas so dangerous with the handles. No look pass to Pequeno. Back out to Italy. Lucas so athletic. Can't get that one to fall. And here comes Kalu. She's bumped by Gonchavez. And Ezine Kalu, if there was ever a Nigerian Basketball Hall of Fame, she is one of the names that would definitely go in it. She doesn't back down from anyone. Just a look at Lucas with that no-look pass. Lucas is one of those players who is indeed a walking highlight reel. 
as Pequeno brings up the ball. So that's Conchalves. There's a kick from Ibekwe to deny the inbound pass to the post. And Usher, what adjustments do you think Coach Walter Costa have made to get Angola more active as Mati Keats gets another field goal? It is obviously the return of Peso. She brings balance to that Angolan team, both on offense and defense, and also her energy, her leadership. She's always talking back to her teammates and saying, let's go, let's move. And that helps. Earlier, they didn't have a player who can do exactly that. If you see the personalities of the rest of the Angolan players, they're uh, quiet, reserved, but Peso is aggressive, and you can see that in the way that she plays. Speaking of aggressive, Mati Keat has been attacking the basket well in these last few possessions. As Chidom held to the bench, and for her is Palace Kanai. Mati Keat with her 11th point of the game, and she takes over from Italy Lucas as the top scorer in the Angolan side. Can't get the second. Macaulay to Kalu. Ibekwe in the corner gets it to Kalu. Kalu wants space to make things happen. Finds Macaulay cutting in the paint. High off the glass. Can't connect. Very unfortunate for Macaulay. But she'll keep her head up. Good decision by Peso to draw the foul. She had two defenders on her, and she has the strength to somehow get the shot up. Taking a look at that replay, she had to contend with Kalu and Makaule. You see her presence there. Now you understand what I was talking about. As she looks to keep Angola in this one. Very short there. Peso. Peso, who is now shooting 25% from free throw. It's not great, Usher. We want the percentage to be between 70 and above. We've not seen too many players with that kind of percentage in this tournament so far. Okwanko to inbound. Little Cusp with the steal. And the finish. Italy Lucas, one man army. That is the Lucas that we know, that we've known for years since she made her debut at the Afro Basket in 2017. Elonu finds it, cutting Ibekwe, who gets her first basket besides free throws. Can you believe that, Usher? Unbelievable. She's been working so hard in this game. And finally, she was rewarded. Let's look at the replay there. As Coach Walter speaks to Italy Lucas. Incredible finish. Powerful. And important for Angola. Walter Costa celebrating that. Pequeno has to adjust her shot. And Matikic will be fouled once again in the low post. <laughs> Matikic, who has had three chances to go to the free throw line will go there again and that seems to be what is working for her camping out in that low post getting the ball and hashing it out with the bigs of nigeria 
It's also was good for Angola to go to the charity line just to catch their breath because Nigeria run that floor like it's a 100 meter sprint. Palace, it's about to Ibekwe. Ibekwe tries to get it back to Palace. And no basket. They're going to call an offensive foul on Funayi. And that's going to be her first personal foul. I think it's always great that the players have the opportunity to talk to the referees and at least voice their concerns. The referees do listen. There's mutual respect. Ibekwe to Palace. Back to Ibekwe. And it's back to a 22-point lead, Usher. Very good finance there between Palace and Ibekwe. Peso. Unable to finish that possession. Here comes Kalu and Nigeria. DT Gress can't connect on that one either. Pequeno will bring back the, bo the ball up the floor at a slower pace. Lucas to Matikit. Matikit wide open in the paint. And she has been a force for Angola in these last several possessions. 15 points for her. Elono in the wing, left wide open. And she knows how to take those big shots. Adaora Elono, seven points for her. Look, that's a nice, clean shot. She recognized that she had that opportunity and she took it and it's back to a 23-point lead for Nigeria. Golan unable to crack it. Ela tá aqui sozinha. Tu vais. A Lucas entrou bem. Ela vai aguentar-se lá porque depois vai ter ajuda da Avelina. Malta, estamos dentro do jogo. Estamos dentro do jogo. Vamos ter que fazer mais um sacrifício. Estás a ter muito. Nós estamos a defender. Um, dois, dois. Eu já disse. Quando a bola vem para este lado aqui, tu tens que vir para o meio. É no mesmo tempo que tens que vir. Tu estás preocupado com este lado, tu não estavas. Não! Vem para aqui, para o meio. Temos que fechar o meio. E se a bola vem para o meu jogador aqui no meio, tu é que estás a recuperar. Tu ficas com esse jogador. Ok? Vamos aguentar, filhas. Não há problema. Bom, bom, bom. Ei, ei. No ataque, vamos jogar novamente transição. Passa a bola para Lucas. Aqui os dois bloqueios da Avelina e da Cristina para trazer a bola. O outro extremo aqui corta para manter o bloqueio. Ok? Vamos embora, irmão. Well, listening in to Walter Costa telling his team to play better defense and to avoid being embarrassed because clearly the Nigerians are running away with this game. It's a 23 point game as Italy Lucas. Looks to inbound the ball to Regina Picano. Italy Lucas passes the ball to Peso. Peso looking for options. Drive to the basket. She's picked there by Palace. And Kalu to Adawara Palace on the best line. Looking for an option. Kalu at the top. And Amy Okonko shot there. She still had time on the clock. Should have waited a little bit more for the options on offense. And that is the denial right there. Big block there from Palace. Another block from Palace, and we've been calling it Block City. That's the seventh block in this game. Usher, Kalu sees the open lane, takes it. You just give her an inch of space. 
and she's going to squeeze right by you. She's not the reigning MVP for nothing. She's out here making a case for herself once again. Lucas now from downtown. Carla tries to save it, but that was a good defensive hustle from her. And take a look at this replay, the ultimate rim protector, Palace Kunai. And in case you didn't know, she's the player that we're hoping dunks in one of these games. Palace and Chidom, by the way. I think we need to have a word with yeah, them. I was just going to say that, Asher. <laughs> They need to give us a good show at this tournament. Surely, surely. Lucas dancing around her defenders for the finish. Italy, Lucas, the walking highlight reel for Angola. But Kunai on the other end, trying to make them pay. She misses on that move. Okonkwo with the scoop. No good, and Rosemira get the rebound for Pequeno to bring the ball up. Nice handles from Pequeno. Kick out to Peso for that baseline shot. In and out. And good possessions on both ends of the floor. Just unable to close it out. Nadine Manuel trying to get a piece. And instead of the ball, she gets a piece of Palace. Picking up her third personal foul. Excuse me, that would be her second foul. And a timeout has been called on the floor. Angola still not able to crack that lead. Nigeria called a timeout, however, just to make sure things are working for them. Let's head out to their huddle. If you sprint it, you would have got a layup. We talked about it, right? Great look. She didn't have to wait for you. Those big girls can't run with you. They can't run with you, but you, you busting your butt. Good job. Hey, right now, if they're in man or in their hands on, go thumb. If they're in man, just go trail high without the screen. Okay, trail high without the screen. Let's go, let's go. We're listening in to the Nigerian timeout. The coach Otis Huley giving a lot of confidence to Palace and telling her that no one on the Angolan team can match her pace down the lane. And true to those words, the Angolan bigs have been slow all game and they'll end up fouling her. Let's see how that plays out as Amy Okonkwo looks for an option. There's a foul and Ibekwe is on the ground. As we said earlier, by the time Ibekwe gets to the hotel today, she will truly need a rest. More than a rest, she just needs an ice bath. See in the right corner, trying to see what happened while well, tangled up with Italy Lucas. There's a body knock there and she fell to the ground. Italy Lucas is very powerful. Have you seen her workout videos? Well, in my next life, I will be doing such things. Trust me. Italy Lucas puts in the work to make sure that she's one of the strongest players on the floor. I'm talking about point guards, shooting guards, and post players. That's right. And now Sarah Gamal from Egypt will look at the replay there. Sarah Gamal, one of the referees that made history at the 3-on-3 three three basketball as the short version of the game made a debut at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Fast hijab wearing, fast Arab woman to officiate at the Olympics. So a historic Mecca there looking at the details of that play there. And she'll be making a decision on what exactly happened. Let's look at it again. Mm. 
And indeed, Ibekwe does contact with Italy Lucas. And the referee from Tunisia, Saber Rezgi, calls a foul. And it will be Nigeria's ball as Ibekwe and Kalu sign out of this game. Inbound, Amukamara gets it to Ogoke. Keno giving her no space. Nice find for cutting Okonkwo, but they just couldn't finish that one out. And here come Angola on the other, on the other end. 52 seconds left to play, but Keno has not gone all the way. Penso short. Amukamara, nice move, also off the mark. And what a pace this game has taken in this last two, three possessions. Pequeno kicks it out to Rosemira. Rosemira to find Italy Lucas in the corner. Italy Lucas making it rain. That's going to be 16 points for her. That was good ball movement for Angola in that possession. If they could just keep on doing that for the rest of this game, that scoreline could change. We've been speaking about ball distribution and Angola need to help Christina and Italy Lucas. And then we're trying to get that last bucket for Nigeria. It's no good. Pecano launches up a long one and that will take us to the end of the third quarter. Still a 20 point lead for Nigeria. Angola have fought and fought, but on the defensive end, they've not managed to slow down the Tigres of Nigeria, and that's the scoreline at the bottom of the third quarter. Still one quarter to go, Usher. Your Angola, what kind of adjustments are you going to make? Do you think that coming into this second half, we're seeing a different team than we saw in the first half? Well, obviously, Angola have sort of a rhythm right now with Italy Lucas scoring a couple of points, getting off that fast break and also a good setup on the offensive end, but they need to have Peso scoring as well. If you see the execution of their plan, it needs to be better. They have to pass that ball, but you have to give credit to Nigeria who are playing incredible defense and are also running the lane and making it count. Ibekwe putting up her first field goal outside of free throws. But it, like we've been talking about, Palace, the rim protector of the game, she has two blocks under her belt against Angola. And Italy Lucas, who has 16 Ooh. points. And back in the lead for Angola. She has been doing her very best to keep Angola's hopes alive in this matchup. But it's not enough to stop the waterfall that is Nigeria. And they have every intention of making sure that all of Africa understands why they are the reigning champions and why they're looking for back-to-back, two-back championships. Nigeria cannot afford to lose a game this early, even if it's just the group stage. They want to maintain that unbeaten run. They want to equal or even better Senegal's record on the continent, winning four Afrobaskets in a row. And that work continues at this edition. Lucas will bring the ball up. Get it out to Pequeno. Pequeno, nice dish to find Nadir Manuel who misses wildly. Ogoke now can't get that one to drop. And Lolo creates her space and makes that shot. And that's going to be 10 points for Adaora. 
Usher and Nigeria have not slowed down this entire game. You, no difference between the fourth quarter and the first. The energy levels are still high. The pace is still the same. So impressive. Nigeria really are head and shoulders above so many teams. And it's very understandable why they made it to the Olympics earlier on this year. As Rosmira now takes that three-point shot with confidence, knocks it down. Speaking about Nigeria's fitness levels, you have to remember that they've been together since February, walking a couple of weeks and preparing for the Olympic qualifying tournament in Belgrade in Serbia, where they played the USA. Tough opposition, went back to their clubs, then came back together to prepare for Tokyo. They had a camp in Las Vegas before flying out to Tokyo and once again playing against the USA and France and the hosts, Japan. That's a very, very tough lineup of opponents. So for them to come here at the AfroBasket and play against a team like Angola, who last played together last year in the pre-qualifying tournament in Maputo, just goes to show you that there's difference there's a huge difference to the level and also experience exposure as well and it will take a lot for any team to beat nigeria here in yaounde everything has to click for that team so far they're doing a good job and angola are yet to ask tough questions of nigeria now, Asher, is it safe to say, as they do the official review here, is it safe to say that all or at least 90% of Nigeria's national team has players who basketball is a sustainable form of income for them? Yes, you can say that because a lot of them have played college basketball and after graduation have gone on to play professional across Europe. Obviously, some of them have dreams of playing in the WNBA. Adora came close. She still can. And she's been a very good leader for the Tigress. It is really an immensely talented country, and there's so much more than we are seeing already. As the fans continue to ask for Musa to get onto the court. Mujanata Musa is yet to play in this game. As we wait for a decision from Sarah Gamal. El Shanubi. And there it is. Angola with the possession. Rosagala to Rosamira. Palace playing good defense on Manuel. Ogoke also managing to poke it away. Okonkwo down the lane. Can't finish it. And she'll foul Nadir Manuel. As they go back the other end. Manuel will inbound and Angola going to go for a set offense here. Peso. To Lucas. Lucas gets it into Nadir Manuel, gets tripped up with Palace. Kunayi. And the ball is going to go back to Nigeria's favor. It kind of looked like Palace hooked uh, Manuel's leg. And Abosi back in the game. Lucas almost got a piece of that. But Ogoke stepped on the line and ball goes back into the hands of Angola. Angola really haven't been able to do much about this 23 to 20 point lead that Nigeria have throughout the third quarter. Taking a look at their offensive output, Angola scored 19 to Nigeria's 15 points in the third quarter. But Nigeria scored 21 to Angola's 10 
in the second and 31 to Angola's 18 in the first. And with that kind of points differential, it's going to be a chase for Angola the entire game. Seven minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Amukamar gets it to Okonko. Okonko, too hard of a pass to Ogoke. And Okonko, you can see she's not happy with herself. Lucas, nice pass to Nadir Manuel. Manuel, nice soft touch at the basket. And it's 73 to 54 as Enabosi gets it to the top of the key. Amukamara now looking for options. Gets it out to Ogoke. Ogoke finds Palace. Palace to Okonko in the low post. And the Nigeria, the Tigres are putting on a basketball clinic for you. How to make sure that everyone gets touches. You can hear the fans get excited, but let's get excited about that three-point shot from Italy Lucas. That is typical Italy Lucas. That's the one that we know. 19 points for her. And you love a scoring point guard who can get herself on the stats sheet. And finally, Mujanatu Musa comes on. And the fans will love her appearance. There'll be another turnover from Okonkwo. Manuel. No offensive foul there. Yes, there is. That was too hard of a bump. Okonko played her cards right. And that was a hard hit. Okonko is a strong lady to get back up after that one. She'll inbound the ball from the sideline. Three fouls for Nadir Manuel. Amukamara. Gets it to Ogoke. Ogoke back up top. And Abosi, nice find. Italy Lucas tries to get the offensive charge. And she does. And she's helped up by the referee. Helped up with a smile on her face. She's glad that her sacrifice paid off. That's Rosemira right. to Peso. Peso now to Lucas. She has a Goke on her. Playing that tight defense. So pass in to Nadir Manuel. And she liked what was happening on that side of the floor. So yeah, it's a push from Enabosi. So Jared has been doing a good job of making sure they've not gone into foul trouble in this game as Rosa Gala draws in the defense, kicks it out to Rosemira. Rosemira tries to go up with it. She's fouled. Shoot two. Taking a look at that replay. Courageous Rose Mira manages to draw the foul against two defenders. Misses the first one. Manages to lock in to get the second one to go. About halfway through the fourth quarter. Musa now for the long two. Can't hit. Good to see her make those attempts. She's on this squad for a reason, as Nadir Manuel with the offensive boards. Rosmira kick out to Gala. Gala 
almost losing the ball. Again, I am amazed at the focus and intensity that Nigeria have been able to maintain in this game. Lucas loses it. Ogoke now three on one against Peso in Abosi for the finish. Quick as a flash, Nigeria taking advantage of that moment. Nigeria loves to do that, punish any team that makes a mistake. Peso, one step too many. They'll call the walk on her. And that's a good job for the Nigerian defense to collapse and make sure they clog the lane. Amu Kamara brings the ball up. She could go all the way, and she does. Angola making it easy now for Nigeria to almost make this a blowout. Peso on the other side with the response. Good find on the transition by Nadir Manuel. Eight points for Peso. Kwonkwo and one. Beautiful finish there for Konko. Utility player who tries to use every minute that she's on the court to contribute to her team's success. And as one of the young players, that's what you love to see, the continuity and also really for Otis Hewley Jr. Every time he gives a chance to a young player, he loves to see that reward, if you'd call it. And let's go over to the floor to listen to what Coach Walter Costa has to tell his Angolan team. Mala pita qualquer coisa, dá uma volta, se perde a bola. Cada um tem que ir para as suas posições, pá. Eu já disse, a jogadora que perde a bola, e a que tiver mais próximo de outras questões, primeiro vai recuperar. Não, é porque isso é nossa. Nós temos tudo para recuperar. O problema é que vocês estão à espera, que os outros têm que tomar decisões. Ok, aquela jogadora reage por si seguir. Vamos lá, bora, bora. Well, interesting what Walter Costa is telling his team to react real quick to any call that has been made by the referees. And indeed, Angola have needed to do that as Whitney Miguel returns to the court. She's been immensely missed in this game. She could have changed a couple of things, but obviously the game also was very fast. The Nigerian forwards are quick on their feet, but let's see what she's got. It's an air ball. Obviously she's cold, been on the bench for quite some time as Amy Okonko looks to inbound the ball. Angola pressing on defense. Rosemira almost gets that steal in Abosi, keeps it alive, gets it out to Nken. You can see Nigeria have gone deep into the bench. Musa with her first field goal of the game. It's never too late. And it's a tough move against the defense of Whitney Miguel. And Nigeria now have officially almost every player on the scoring board. Only person is left is in Cam Akaraiwe as Whitney Miguel makes that three-pointer count. I got her said earlier they missed her presence in this game. She's shaken off the, the ice 
from her arms. Get warmed up with that three-point shot. Now Okoke on the other side. She's gonna take a look at what she can do. Two seconds on the shot clock. Okoke has to let one loose. And it's a wild shot, which misses everything. Look at some of the Nigeria fans on your screen there. Oh, Goke tries to save it, but no good. Ball will stay on this end of the floor. Gangola. Gala, it's out to Rosemira. Rosemira with a step back three, air balls it. And here comes Sarah Goke with a long pass to Musa. Musa is pushed on the way up to the hoop. And Musa looks like she's got hops. She's a very athletic player. And obviously getting an opportunity to play on the Tigress is a lifetime dream come true. Drops the fast one. This is making good use of her minutes, Usher. And that is impressive, really. Peso manages to keep the ball alive, gets it to Gala, Gala to Rosemira. Rosemira splits the defense and kicks it out for the three-point shot. No good. And Musa with the offensive boards. As Ogoke finds Inkem in the low post, Inkem can't get a handle on it. They call a jump ball. As Ogoke and Okonko assist the comrade up. Just a minute and a half left here before the end of the game. You were talking about points distribution and Akaraiwe is the only one who's yet to score in this game for Nigeria. They could probably make a play for her just to make sure that she's involved. It would be nice. It would be nice, teamwork. But she'd have to communicate that to her teammates. I certainly don't think they'd have a problem with that. As Enabosi brings the ball up. Musa, power dribble. But she steps on the line. And the ball will go the other way. Musa looks like an extremely powerful player, Usher. Yes, she is. But also, grass is green. She's Nigerian. Always powerful, athletic players. Rosemira hit hard on her way up. They'll call the foul on Nkem. That will be her first personal. It's a good job from Rosemira selling that foul. I mean, as a player, especially one who attacks the basket, you need to understand that science and art. And when you do it, especially in a tightly contested game, it pays off. Except this one is not. Even though she reduces the deficit. Great finish. 20 point game. 54 seconds to play. Musa from the baseline. Can't get that one to go. Lucas will push. Almost getting trapped. Nice, fires the pass to Peso. Peso out to Rosemira for the three-point shot. No baseline drive, tries to put it up. Peso with the boards. Unable to save it. Ball will go to Angola. And taking a look at that replay. Peso really trying her very best to get Angola some points here as the game winds down. 14 seconds left on the clock. Twelve now. Nigerian fans, I'm sure, are delighted that 
Nigeria will finish at the top of the table. Winnie Miguel blocked by Musa. Karaiwe, this could be it. No, that was the chance. That was the chance, Asher. Come on, universe. Make it happen. A Karaiwe. She's been relentless so far in this game as Ogoke looks to inbound the ball. And she loses the chance there as Peso gets the ball. Peso almost loses it and tries to finish. She really wanted that. And Enabosi trying to get another buzzer beater, but it's no good. And that will be the end of this game as Nigeria, who had, were red hot straight from the first quarter, scoring 31 to Angola's 18 points, and they never looked back. They managed to extend the lead 52-28 at the half, and it's been maintained between 20 to 23 points. If we take a look at some of those game stats, 46% to 33% from two points, 22% for Nigeria, 30% for Angola. The majority of Nigeria's points actually came off of turnover steals and that transition offense that's just so hard to stop. It's so great at filling up the lanes and making sure that everyone gets touches. Even on the set offense, we look at the top scorers, Kalu for Nigeria, Lucas at 19 points for Angola. The DJ Grass are on track towards that three-peat and in making history and joining Senegal in the elite club of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back champions of Afrobasket. Taking a look at some of these plays, Peso was held to just eight points in this game. But Italy Lucas exploded for 19, and she has done so well for Angola, especially on those fast break opportunities and creating space for herself. Essentially, for Angola, if you are not creating your own shot, you weren't going to get it. Well, about Peso, you have to give it up to Otis Hewley Jr. for the scouting that he did on Peso yesterday. He was sitting right behind us here, taking notes as Angola beat Mozambique. And indeed, the scouting helped because her fouls, they managed to put her in foul trouble very early and Walter Costa had no option but to rest her for most part of the game. And indeed, you can see from the stats, Nigeria with 36 points off of the bench. And that is what exactly you were saying about the quality and the depth of this team, which is still unbeaten, like we said, since October 2nd, 2015 on the African continent. They are the reigning champions and they played like reigning champions. Yes, indeed, they did. Again, every player of the Nigeria squad, squad scored at least one bucket, except for in Kem Akaraiwe, and she had that opportunity at the end of the game, but she just wasn't able to secure it. Italy Lucas, I imagine quite frustrated with the performance of her team in this matchup against Nigeria. We expected a lot more. Uh, from Angola and looking at the turnover situation for Angola, it was 24. That is way too many turnovers to go to have up against a championship team and Nigeria took advantage of that every chance that they could. Second hand points for Nigeria were 13 and look at that, the bench points 36, Usher. That's depth and Otis Hewley Jr. knows that that is one of the strengths. But really for Angola, they'll be disappointed that they did not use size in that pain to dominate this game. I mean, when you have players like Whitney Miguel, Christina Matiket, and Peso in there, as well as Nadir Manuel, there's a lot that they could have done. And they'll be watching the film from this game thinking, that they should have done better. Now there it is, Nigeria, top of Group B 
as expected. And indeed, they qualify for the quarterfinals. They'll have two rest days before coming into the last eight. Angola finished second and Mozambique finished third. And that will take us to the end of the day and the end of the group stage. Tomorrow will be a rest day, as Usher said, and we'll be back with a qualification to quarterfinals on the 22nd of September from myself and the team here. Have a good night.